Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everyone to our New Year's Eve celebration. We just want to thank you all for joining us today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there will be something that'll be shared that'll be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. All of our first timers, we want to welcome you in. Just like we always do, click your shares, set your watch parties, put this out there, folks. I'm telling you, for the word of the Lord that's coming for this new year. Um, I want you all to go ahead, grab your drinks. You got your popcorn, get your popcorn, whatever you want to get. Get your pens and your pads ready. Get your devices ready to capture what the Spirit of God is going to say to you tonight. Um, this, this has been a year. This has been a year. Um, we played a recap of the word of the Lord from last year. Um, I also want to thank my brother Rufus Johnson, RJ. Um, love you, man. Love you, brother. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence today. Um, I, listen, this is a young man that I've known since he was a teenager, and I'm so proud of this guy. Um, when I asked him to come and do a selection for us, he was so willing and able to do it. And uh, we, we just really look forward to doing more kingdom partnerships with him in the near future. So, RJ, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It meant a lot to me that you did say yes. So thank you so much for that. So go out and grab his stuff. He has a new single thank you out. Listen, stream it. Go, I mean, download it, do everything. Just, just, just put the numbers out there. Let people know that his um, song is out there. He did a song for us years ago, years ago. Um, entitled Brand New Me. He created this song and um, I've just loved his production quality and everything that he's been doing. So I just want to give him a big shout out for that. Um, man, before I get going with this word for the year, before we start praying, um, one of the things is um, for all of our Spirit of Fire folk out there, Spirit of Fire Nation, we just thank you for hanging in there this year. This has been a different year. This has been a year like no other where with the pandemic and social um, uprisings, and it, it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot for a lot of people. But I want to encourage you today that we as the body of Christ, that we function in a, on a higher level. We function from a different system. And so God really wants me to encourage you tonight. And I'm really going to begin to speak this word prophetically, but also teach practically some things. And so I want you to listen. I want you to really listen with the eyes, the, the ear of your heart, and let the eyes of your understanding be open. I know for some of you, you've dealt with sometimes just being frustrated, being cooped up in the house and not being able to do things the way you were normally used to doing them. And we've all had to adjust. We've all had to shift. But it's what you do with these moments. It's what you do in the moments of crisis that determine your outcome. So I do want to encourage you this day that while even when things are going on in the earth that we as the body of Christ are supposed to increase, <clears throat> we're supposed to rise and shine. And so um, that's our scripture out of Isaiah 60, one through five. We are rise and we shine for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And so, you know, as, as we begin to go through this year, um, I didn't know that, you know, things were going to turn out the way that they did. But I did know something was happening because I know that the spirit of God had impressed upon my heart to go digital. And so even as uh, we be begin to take this time, I've done actually more preaching this year than I've done in a long time. I mean, I was teaching almost five, five days a week online uh, with classes and Bible study and our church service. And so it, it's been a time where it's been productive. We've sown into the lives of people um, that we didn't stop doing ministry. Ministry doesn't stop because a pandemic is hit. But I want you to know that we are the answer in this earth, church. And so I want you all to do this with me. I want you to set your expectation on high. Gather your family. Get the people around there. Let your children hear this word. Listen, we're going to be doing also an 11 o'clock um, replay of this. And we want to let people know it's going to be out there. And so listen, we want you to receive this. I want as many people to get this as possible. So I want you to go ahead and invite your friends right now. Click it. Let them know. Come on. I'm giving you time to get yourself together, get yourself ready. And I want you to be undistracted because the spirit of God is going to speak something expressly to you um, concerning this year and just concerning your life in general. 
A lot of times we look for a prophetic word, but even the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy, talking about the scriptures, that if we know how to function by the word of God, we will know how to conduct our lives on a day in, day out basis. I was talking to somebody recently and I, and you know, and I hear this a lot from people. Everybody has been waiting for 2021 to get here. They're like, they, they just think that at, at 20, at, at midnight, that when the clock strikes midnight, that just something is just going to happen and everything is just going to change. But this is the thing I've come to realize that things don't change until we change and until we begin to change how we think and how we believe and how we feel. So if you are afraid in 2020 and you go into 2021 afraid, you're going to still see the same results. But I got a word for you that's going to help transform your way of thinking going into this new year. And I believe it's going to be a powerful word. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into this to hear what thus saith the Lord. Now, I know what I have on my notes. I know what God has already spoken, but I'm looking forward to seeing what the Holy Spirit is even going to bring out as I'm talking. Because sometimes I'm, I'm here and I'm preaching and I'm hearing some things for the first time myself because he's flowing and, and speaking through me and out of me. And so I'm excited to see as we begin to go step by step to see what thus saith the Lord. I want you to begin to draw, draw. There is no distance in the spirit. So wherever you are now, we're alive. This is a live feed. You can draw on the spirit of God to bring things out of me. So I want you all to get involved with this today. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's pray and let's set the atmosphere. I know you've been busy today. I know you've been bustling, hustling. Some people have been working, but I want you to get ready to receive right now. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, Speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring forth wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently. Now, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the great teacher, the comforter, the counselor, the guide, the one ready to give us peace. We do covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration to assist us and to help us as children of light. So, Father, we just thank you this day that every ear is anointed to hear this word. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we know that this has been a year that many people have gone through many things. There's some who've lost loved ones. There's some who've lost jobs, lost resources, income. Their health has been attacked. Their mind has been attacked. And so Father, we come in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ himself to speak peace over each and every individual under the sound of my voice. I thank you for restoration right now. I thank you for healing and deliverance that'll take place. I thank you for answers that'll be given and granted by the spirit of the living God. Even as I begin to speak, supernatural utterance, let it be given unto me. And also I pray for boldness, even as Paul the apostle prayed, I pray to speak forth this word with boldness, with clarity and with supernatural accuracy. And so we just thank you for it. We bless you for it now. And we call it so in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right, folks, y'all ready for this? Let's jump into it now. This year, um, it was on February, I mean, I'm sorry, December the 10th uh, of this year. Uh, I, I came into our living room and I sat down and as I began to pray and I just wanted to spend time with God and I just felt led by the spirit of God to just sit and pray and hear. This was around 10, 13, 10, 15. I, Cause I wrote it down. I always when I, when I'm in my prayer time and I get a word, I always document the date and the time. So I know when I received what I received from God and it was 12, 10, 10, 13 PM. And as I begin to sit and I begin uh, to write and begin to hear things. I begin to write what I begin to hear. And some of the things that I heard, I'm going to share with you tonight. I'm not going to share all of it. Some was for me personally, but some was for us collectively. So as I begin to preach tonight, some of this word is going to be for the body of Christ as a whole collectively. Some will be for us as spirit of fire fellowship. Every, for those who are members, partners, supporters of this work, it'll be for us. And so we're going to kind of 
flow with this thing today. But as I began to sit, I heard this word and I was like, huh? And, and when I said and I heard it and I knew what God was already dealing with me about. So I already had a, I already knew that we were going to be going into the new year dealing with this particular subject to a degree. And I've already begun to share it. But now God began to be a little more specific with me and get, get, gave me a little more clarity. But I know there's going to be more. There's going to be more that he begins to give as we go. And it simply is this. He says this year is going to be of kingdom renaissance. The year of the kingdom renaissance. And I was like, when I heard this word renaissance, I'm like kingdom renaissance. Because I kept hearing renaissance. I'm like, what? what, what, what? And I know I know the term and terminology. But as I begin to now look up the word renaissance and I begin to pair the two together. This is the definition of it. A kingdom renaissance is a transitional movement marked by kingdom influence expressed in the flowering of the arts, entertainment, literature in every major sphere of influence. You will begin to see the fingerprint of God in modern science, archaeological findings, innovations and technologies. It was very specific. And I'm like, whoa, this this is a little more intense. This, this, this is going to be a little more. I, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again. Um, a kingdom renaissance is a transitional movement. Now, ho, oh, I, I sense something as I'm speaking here. I need for you all to begin to elevate your expectation. Because some of what's happening is you're still busy fighting battles in a low sphere where the enemy is trying to keep you held down so that you can't receive the deeper things of God. And so God is going to break forth some things in you right now. So, so I need you to listen. Listen to what I'm saying. A kingdom renaissance is a transitional movement. It's a transition. Transition equals change. Change is a shifting, a shifting of position, ideas, thoughts, positions, whatever it is, it's a transition. There's going to be a transition that takes place this year, a transitional movement marked by kingdom influence, kingdom influence. And I'm going to go and start dealing a little bit more with this means kingdom influence expressed in the flowering of the arts of entertainment, literature. You're going to see more release this year. Every major sphere of influence, you're going to begin to see the fingerprint of God, the fingerprint. You're going to begin to trace God in different areas where you didn't trace him before. You didn't see him as prominent. You begin to see it a little more prominent because even in modern science, even with everything we've been going through with this pandemic, with, with vaccines and with things coming forth, there are going to be archaeological findings to support certain things from Scripture. There are going to be innovative ideas, new technologies that are, God is going to begin to bring forth in the earth in these days. And so you need to be ready for this. As I begin to hear this, all of a sudden this began to come up. This statement began to rise up in me that nations shall come to thy light. Nations shall come to thy light. Where there is innovation, where there are things being created, there, there, there will, it will cause a drawing to come to the place of innovation, to the place where the transitioning and the shifting is taking place. There's a new mindset that God is doing in people. And so we begin to go into our foundational scripture here at Spirit of Fire in Isaiah. And he brought this back up to me because God has been showing me I didn't miss it. You didn't miss it when you heard these things. And I've been setting this thing up. I'm setting up the platforms for a new shift and a new wave to take place. And it says here in Isaiah 60, one through five in the amplified version. I'm going to read it. It says arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
Your light has already come. The enlightenment has already hit you. The revelation has already been released. Things have already been revealed and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, body of Christ, and his glory shall be seen on you. This is a time where his glory, God's glory wants to be seen, needs to be seen in us and upon us. <clears throat> there are some people who backed off during this pandemic, but there are others who've advanced during this pandemic season. And so those who have advanced are those who've had a mindset of kingdom and a mindset of God's principles and laws to implement that's watch this, that supersede natural laws and natural things that have come. And so those that have a kingdom mindset will begin to see an acceleration and an increase in areas that they have never seen before. Now, I got, I got a lot more I got to share with you. Now, watch this. He says this, and the glory shall be seen on you. Verse three, and nations shall come to your light. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Nations shall come to your light. Uh, see, when your light, when the light is revealed, when you begin to show who you are as the body of Christ, when you begin to function in God's kingdom, his system, his method of operation, that's what the kingdom of God is. His way of doing, his way of being right. It's heaven's agenda being implemented and enforced in the earth. It's heaven's economy, heaven's way of doing things, heaven's atmosphere. God wants to execute his atmosphere here in the earth and begin to release who we are as the body of Christ. Now, hold on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want to take this thing. And I want to be like a skilled surgeon tonight. And I want to sow this thing into your heart. He says, nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Some people are thinking too small. He says people need to begin to think bigger. Uh, there was a word that God gave me to share years ago, and as I was looking back over that word this past week, I feel as though I need to share it again. I did this message called This Is That, and in that prophetic word that God gave me then, there's a portion of it I felt as though I need to say it again now, that God is gonna take you from miracles of endurance to miracles of conquest. From miracles of endurance to miracles of conquest. Miracles of endurance, things like getting the rent paid, things like just getting food on your table, things that really have hit this year like never before. I have never seen lines of people lining up for food like I have this year. I mean, these are people who are working people who are called quote unquote, the working poor. And that was never God's intent for his church to be poor and to be lacking even in the time of famine or pandemic. This even happened with Joseph, that God showed Joseph and gave him divine strategy that when times of plenty hit, how to handle the times of plenty. So when the lean years hit, that there was no lack amongst the people because his man was in position with the wisdom of God upon him, with the anointing of God upon him to handle things and to now see things ahead of time. This is why prophetic voices are so important even in this time, but you as the body of Christ, we as the body of Christ should not just rely on prophets to speak things, what thus saith the Lord, because in this new dispensation and under this new covenant, God's nature abides on the inside of us and he will begin to give you specific instructions for your life and for your household to prepare you for things to come. And just because God is preparing you for, see, whatever God prepares you for, he's getting ready to manifest in you, through you, and to you. And wherever God is leading you to go into, God wants to invade those areas. So now God wants to begin to cause kings, people of great influence, to be attracted to us as the body of Christ who have answers. But now we have to be well versed enough to handle those spheres of influence to be able to communicate with kings and presidents and those in authority. You're gonna to have to know the language of the sphere of influence that God is saying I'm sending you into. 
So you're going to have to begin to study where you're about to invade. And so you got to be mindful of it now. Let's keep reading. Let's keep going here. Let's keep going here. <laughs> Glory to God. And he says, kings, to the brightness of your rising. He says, lift up your eyes round about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. I keep seeing things and hearing things as I'm reading. There's somebody who's still dealing with things and you're so caught up with what you're currently dealing with that you're missing the grand scheme of things. And God is saying your eyes need to be open and you need to seek the, for the understanding of God for your life and ministry and for your calling because the stuff you've been going through in your home and relationships is blinding you to the bigger picture. So he says your eyes need to be open this year. So watch this. He says now, he says, lift up your eyes round about you and see. Lift up, lift up, lift up your eyes round about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be carried and nursed in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant and your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the dead sea shall be turned to you. Unto you shall nations come with their treasures. When he says there's going to be great deliverance, there are some things that this year need to be cut off forever out of your life. And when those things are cut off, it's going to be, and I heard this as I was sitting and I began to see things. It was in the book of Isaiah. He says, the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the very moment that sprung in my spirit, I jumped and I quickened. I was like, oh my God, I see that. Oh my God. He says, the things that have been blocking your view of God have to be removed this year so that you can see him for who he is. And there are some things that are going to have to die in your life so that you can see God for who he is. For some of you during this past year, there were things that you acquired where you begin to see God in a greater light because you were quieted, because you were confined. And so it had to be between you and God. And there were some things you were looking at preachers like God in your life. And God is saying, these are my ministry gifts to help develop you so that now they'll point you to me, not to point you to them. And so now I'm, listen, I'm on a mission to train you as to who you are in Christ. My thing is this, listen, oh, glory to God. Hear me. Yes, fivefold ministry is needed. I'm a fivefold ministry gift and I understand the importance of it. But God is saying he needs to stop handicapping my people by not teaching them who they really are and to get them to function as to who they really are. And sometimes we'll cripple people by doing all the studying for them without encouraging and challenging them to begin to seek God for themselves. And you're going to have to seek God. We're here to help you with the tools. We're here to help teach and train you. But now it's a time to push you out the nest. It's a time to push you in the purpose. It's a time to push you in the destiny. And it's also a time to push you in the peace to wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking. And he says this, he says, your son shall come from afar. And he, he says all that, he says, in the, in the abundant sea, your heart shall be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the dead sea shall be turned to you. Unto you shall the nations come with their treasures. One of the things also that the Spirit of God began to deal with me about is this year, you're going to begin to deal with more, even where the area of prosperity is concerned where my people need to begin to increase and they need to begin to do things and structure themselves so that increase can take place in their life so that they can be free to do the thing that I created and called for them to do. There's going to be such innovation that's released. You can't do things the same way. This is the, we have shifted into a new normal. We have shifted into a new season already. Whether you realize it or not, we have already shifted. Some of you still are trying to get back to what once was. What once was is no longer. God is saying, I've already changed the dial. I've already turned and I'm already ahead in your future, preparing things that you're about to walk into. Remember, I'm the God. I'm the uh, alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end and the first and the last. And so when I speak to you, I'm not just speaking to you from your present. I'm speaking to you in your present situation, but I'm speaking from your future self. I'm speaking from your future provision. So when I'm calling you, I'm calling you to where I already am in your future. And so when God is saying is, I'm speaking unto you to do things because I've already laid the map out. It's just like when a baby starts to walk and that parent is in front of them calling them. God is saying, I'm calling you now. I'm calling you to me. 
I'm calling you to come towards where I am because where I am is where your provision is. Wherever I call you, I provide for you and your provision will not be seen until you step into the realm of what I've called for you to do. And he says this, there should be great deliverance and there should be great joy. And so now God wants to quicken you. He wants to make you alive and he wants to energize you to not only receive, but to enjoy and you got to have the mindset. It's not just about you. It's about your children and your children's children. There are things that God is about to bring you into and he wants to bring you into. But that is not just about your enjoyment, but it's about laying a path for future generations to come. And you have to be ready for it and you have to be mindful of it. Now, in verse 10 of that same chapter. He says, foreigners shall build up your walls and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath, I smote you, but in my favor, pleasure and goodwill, I've had mercy, love and pity for you and your gates shall be open. Listen to this and your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations and their kings led in procession, your voluntary captives. He says, God, watch this. Your gates should not be shut day or night. Your gates will not be shut day or night. Your gates, watch this. Listen, you got to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Even within Scripture, He's speaking future tense. This is a prophetic word coming from Isaiah's mouth. Then watch this. The internet is a means, a highway that is neither closed day nor night, but it is continuously going on. There are things that God has new innovations that are going to be going on that's going to cause wealth to come into your house while you are sleeping, while you're doing other things. You'll set things in motion that they will be producing for you while you are now doing other things. And God is telling you to set things in motion. You are not supposed to put all your eggs in one basket. And so he's saying, I want you to diversify and I want you to have a thought process because if you don't think ahead of time, and if you don't think investment minded that you will waste everything in your present and neglect your future. And he says, I want you. That's my kingdom system. What do you mean kingdom renaissance? There is a new mindset. God saying, I need you to think different now. You've been thinking the way you've been thinking. So you've been doing what you've been doing, which is causing you to have what you've been having. And he says, I need for you to shift now. I need for you to think higher. You've been praying for higher, but you ain't been thinking higher. You still been thinking where you were praying from. And so God is saying, come on, man. God is saying this. He told me to tell you this. He says, tell them to stop asking just for what they want, but ask me what I want for them. And from that, they'll begin to now have their prayers and their declarations in alignment with me. You asking for one thing and God wants you to have this. You asking for the house and God wants you to have the complex. And God is trying to get it across to you. If you would just ask of me, I can now get involved because I've already given you the authority over the works of my hands. But you're limiting the holy God of Israel through your low level of thinking. And God is saying, I need you to expand because you keep seeing how you going to do it. He says, if you can do it, then your vision is too small for me. I need for you to dream of something that only I can do for you. And now I want to get involved in this thing. So you need to be ready for that. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, let me settle down. Let me settle down here a little bit. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm, I got myself under a timer here. I got about 19 minutes or so. So let's hit this thing. Watch this. This will begin to take place. There are some things that are going to begin to take place as we begin to function in this kingdom system. This kingdom system. The first place, as I begin to study this out, the first place that I begin to see the phrase the kingdom of God is mentioned in, our, in our Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. And starting in verse 25, and it reads like this. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go there. Get, have your Bible, get there, read it. It says, watch this. It says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He says, watch this, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body and raiment. He says, behold, the fowls of the air, they don't sow, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take you thought for your clothing or your raiment? He says, consider the lilies of the field. They grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that Solomon in all his glory, 
was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Watch this. He says, O ye of little faith. So that means if you are worrying about these things, your faith is little. Your faith is small. And he wants you to amp up your faith, to have trust in him. He says, therefore, take no thought saying. He says, don't take thought of it by opening up your mouth. You capture a thought. You take a thought saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? How are we going to buy clothes? So every time you see a need show up, it comes out of your mouth. How are we going to handle it? I don't know what we're going to do. And now you're in fear because of lack and insufficiency. And God says, take no thought saying what we're going to do. He, now watch this. Why is he telling us this? He says, watch this. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. The world, people who are outside of the covenant of promise, who are outside of the body of Christ, who have not named Jesus as Lord of their lives. He says this, they seek these things. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But then he says this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Put first things first and his righteousness and all these things. What? What you're going to wear? What you're going to eat? While everybody else is tripping off of stuff, you're not going to be acting like the world because you're not functioning by their system. We're going to be functioning by the kingdom of God's system. And now the kingdom of God's system operates off of tithes and offerings. We operate off of giving. We operate off of doing great business practices. Listen, savings is in the Bible. Investment is in the Bible. Sowing and reaping is in the Bible. Learning how to give, even in the midst of where you see lack, this is a time where whatever is in your hands is what God wants to use to multiply you, to increase you, to cause increase to come into your life. And so watch this. We got to know how to function by God's system and learn how to trust in him because now not only when we trust in him, he'll show us what to do in the midst of our situation. And there is no situation that's too hard for God. He says this. He says, now all these things shall be added to you. It's going to be added to you. I mean, unexpected income It's expected income, but it might come from unexpected sources. Things got to show up, a check will come in the mail. Somebody will call you and say, God, laid on my heart to buy you all groceries or to pay this for you. He'll use, raise up people to use their power, resources, and influence to get you jobs that you didn't get before, to help push you into your business, to help give you and devise the business plan and give you for the upstart capital to get the job done. God will cause things to come. He'll cause money. Listen, if, God, if Jesus told Peter, go get a fish, and the first one you catch going to have our taxes to pay for it, why are you worrying about the tax bill that the IRS just sent in the mail to you? If God can take care of that tax, he can take care of your taxes. Whatever bill is needed, the almighty God, when you function by the kingdom of God's system, it'll work for you. You got to trust your God. And he says, a renaissance, you have to shift your thinking. You're going to have to change how you believe. Listen, I understand with this pandemic, with vaccines coming out, everybody has their idea about it. Some people trust it. Some people don't. My trust is not in a vaccine. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for medicine. And also God will be involved in a lot of creative things where medicine and science is concerned. But watch this. My ultimate trust is in the living God. I've been building myself up for years for this. So that when other people are walking in fear, as soon as somebody walk past them, oh my God, you don't have the six feet distance. And I understand we got, we follow the rules and the laws of the land, but I ain't tripping. If somebody cough around me, I've been declaring for years, every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria and infirmity that touches this body here dies instantly. For I function in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made me free from the law of sin and death. So now when pandemic has hit and other people scared and tripping, I'm not fearing. I'm not boasting or bragging, but I've been building my faith up for this for years, speaking this on a consistent basis, functioning by the kingdom of God's system, because I had an offensive mindset that I'm not waiting for something wrong to show up for me to start functioning like this. If you build yourself up, put the word of God in you when you don't need it. So it's there for you when you do need it. And so some people are, are reactive. And now this year, you're going to have to be proactive and you're going to have to start setting yourself up. And God is saying, set order for what you're ready to receive. Set order. You need to write that down. Set order for what you're ready to receive. What is it that you're believing for? Set order for. Set order for. 
Some of you need to do stuff like get your finances in order. You need to sit down and, and do get your living will and your trust and your power of attorney and all those things in order. Some of you are like, why? I feel like if I do that, that means I'm preparing myself to die and I ain't ready to die. No, it's just good business practice. You want to make sure that things are set and in order because if God can see that he can trust you to be a good steward over your resources, then he'll dump more in your hands because things are set up. You have vehicles in place, not only to take care of you, but to take care of your children and your children's children. The Bible says a good man, a good man leaves an inheritance, a good man, a good man leaves an inheritance. Because if you want to be a good man, you're supposed to leave something for your children and your children's children. That's kingdom. See, that's the kingdom mindset. You got to understand these things. The kingdom mindset says to love your enemies, to do good to them, to do all and speak all manner of evil against you. That's the kingdom system. This is how we function as the body of Christ. Now watch this. <laughs> oh, I, I need to read this now because I got to go into my second step, my second point. I got about 12 minutes. I got about 12 minutes. Hey, we're going into this new year with a new attitude and a new mindset. There is a renaissance that's hitting. And because I got some old prophetic words that God gave me that I could release to you all that I want to share also. Now watch this. The earth has been going through great travail. And we as the church are supposed to flourish even in the midst of a pandemic. See, when we walk in divine healing and health and supernatural provision, because watch this, God's principles are pandemic proof. God's principles are pandemic proof. So no matter what's going on, his principles work no matter what. See, the law of receiving says this, whatever you major on with your eyes, whatever you major on with your ears, whatever you major on with your mouth, will enter into your heart, your human spirit. And when acted upon, it'll overwhelm and overtake your life. Listen, I still been tithing. I still been giving. And even times where I felt pressure, I was like, no, God, your word says this. And I've seen people show up and money has come from unexpected places. Just popped up when needed. Things that, listen, increase. We had increase even in the beginning of the year. I, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm just, I ain't boasting or bragging, but I'm, I'm a, listen, God says to testify. Man, we made more money this year personally and I personalized. I've made more money this year than I have in my entire life. This is the best year I've had financially. The best year I've ever had in my life financially. And I give glory to God. See, I was so busy focusing on the next level and the next level that God had to quicken. He had to capture me and says, look, begin to be thankful for what's already happened. Look at what I've already done for you. Look at, listen, this is the best place, the most stable place that you've ever been. There's been consistency. There's been increase in your life. And I had to say, Father, forgive me. Thank you. And I give you glory for it right now. And I give you praise. God is a good God, man. And he has done good. He has taken care of me and my family, even in the midst of a pandemic. God is great. God is good. I'm telling you, portfolios are increasing. My stock has been increasing. Stuff that I've invested in is increasing even in the midst of a pandemic. God is a good God. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to give him glory and I'm going to give him praise. You need to have a praise break right there, right? Right now, Father, I thank you. I thank you for stability of a job. I thank you right now for a place to live. I thank you for the food that I do have to eat. I just want to thank you for it right now and give you glory in the name of the Lord. I'm about ready to shout right now. Glory to God. Now watch this. Amen. That was our praise break moment right there. We going into 2021 with a new attitude, with a new mindset. All right, spirit of fire. We're going to do and accomplish more this year than we've ever done before in our ministry's existence. We are going on for 15 years this year. This is going to be our 15th year, and it's going to be the greatest year. In the name of Jesus, I declare it. I declare the end from the beginning. We're going to have more money flow through this ministry. We're going to have more impact in this ministry. I'm going to show you what the Spirit of God told me about what's, going to, what's getting ready to happen. And watch this. I want to show you something here. I want to show you this first. Um, the second point. Watch this. I want to speak real quick about unity and division in the kingdom. Unity and division. This is the next thing he began to talk to me about. Unity and division. In Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 28. Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 28. He says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed. 
and said, is not this, is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts. And watch this. That, that, see, that's the gifts of the spirit in operation. He knew what they were thinking. And he said unto them, every kingdom, watch this, divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or every house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Okay. And if by Beelzebub, and if I, Jesus said, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I, and watch this, this is the point I'm coming to right here. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. So watch this. Satan has tried to bring division in the body of Christ to eliminate our effectiveness. Satan has brought division. You've seen division like never before in the body of Christ. Some of this is Satan. But this is the other side of it. Also, there has been an unveiling by the Holy Spirit to show us things that need to be addressed and evicted out of our hearts and our minds to be transformed into kingdom citizens. There are things that the Holy Spirit unveiled so that we can see people for who they really are and that they can begin to see. Because remember, rebuke, judgment starts in the house of God. It doesn't end here. So God is cleaning house within us. He's dealing with things that even though it looks like great division and it has caused great division, it's to really cause repentance in the lives, in the hearts, in the minds of the people who are not seen properly. So God, he wants to restore things so that ultimately the fullness of who we are can begin to manifest. Also in this verse, in verse 28, he, Jesus is also showing us when we exercise our authority, then the kingdom is manifesting in the earth. When we exercise our authority, when we begin to reveal who we are in this earth, we are manifesting the kingdom of God in the earth. We're bringing heaven to earth when we begin to cast out devils, to speak with new tongues, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to be creative and innovative in this earth to create new witty inventions, ideas, and concepts, and to bring things into fruition so that now we can begin to rule and reign in the different areas and mountains and kingdoms of this earth, that the kingdom of our God, the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God. And so God wants us to invade these areas. So now I'm ready to finish up and wrap it up here. I got about five more minutes to go. So I'm going to wrap it up with this the continuation of this prophetic word as I begin to sit and as I begin to pray, one of the things he says, you will begin. This is the spirit of fire. He says, you, he was speaking to me this word. He says, you will begin to reestablish spirit of fire as a prophetic teaching ministry. And you will not water down what I give you, but you will be able to articulate it properly to the, to the people, not just putting the teaching ministry, but he wants me to begin to switch gears to put the prophetic and the teaching. I'm a prophetic preacher who teaches practically. But he says, I need for you to begin to speak and to now come into your prophetic mode like never before. This office, this prophetic office, because when you function as a prophet in the earth, one of the jobs is to begin to speak to the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places, and to go and to begin to declare things in regions, territories, and nations. And as we begin to speak the word of the Lord, there will be a supernatural backing of the spirit of God because God says, I will confirm my word with signs following. Watch this. And he says this, and you are wise. He's talking about us. You are wise master builders in the kingdom of God. And I've called you to build my kingdom. Paul said, I'm a wise master builder. We are master builders. We are skillful in what it is our God wants us to do. And so this year will be a year of great planning and great execution of planning and proper planning. There will be such a restructuring in how we are doing things 
to begin to execute and to go into territories that are even uncomfortable. And God says, I want you to take a prophetic voice and I want you to begin to prophesy to those areas, to begin to prophesy to those communities. And he says, your ministry will be known for my power flowing through it. And many will come to experience that power and you will teach them my word and demonstrate by my spirit. You will teach the word and demonstrate by the spirit. The book of Acts said that Jesus began to both do and to teach. He demonstrated his power. Then he taught on what he just did. And so God wants us to demonstrate himself with power. Paul says, I don't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but I come to you in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And the power of God is about to be heightened in the lives of those who are submitting themselves to it. And God wants us to train people to function in his power, to flow in his power so they can go into their area of influence and dominate and begin to dispel even behind the scenes, the spiritual forces that have been at work all along, demonic forces that have been working in neighborhoods and territories, the spirit of poverty that has been going into dilapidated places to try to hold and stifle people down that we're to go in with the blessing of God and turn those areas into the garden of Eden. And this will be a kingdom collaborative, the kingdom of God, because he dealt with me about partnerships. And he said, they're going to be great partnerships that come together in these days where people's ministries are going to come together for this great push and this great move. And there will not be territorial things and that the spirit of competitive jealousy God is dealing with right now. And so that there is a need for one another, that the scales will come off of the eyes of men and women of God, and they'll begin to collaborate like never before. And this is the thing that God is saying, that there are many people whose hearts have been out there and they've been working alone and they've been crying out to God. And God is about to bring you supernatural help there may be a pastor, a prophet, a ministry gift that you've been going into communities and you've been laboring for years and for years. But God is beginning to bring a, a kingdom collaborative that God will says, I want you to begin to function at an all time level. The spirit of God spoke to me some time ago and he says, I want you to begin to call certain men of God, certain women of God, certain people as I begin to direct you and begin to speak into their lives. Because there are things that they're dealing with that they need a prophetic voice, that they need somebody to encourage them. And I began to do that. And it was right on time. People were responding. Man, I just heard that. God was just dealing with me about that. I just needed that. And God is saying this, that we need to work together in these last days to get the job done. And he wants to use us for that. Hey, glory to God. He says you will also be a catalyst. We will be a catalyst to rebuild communities and nations Watch this and place pastors in those areas to train and to govern my people. So not only he says, I want you to go into communities to help invoke change, but to begin to develop ministries and pastors in those areas to oversee the people, to begin to work with the people in those communities. And God is saying this, I now have, I'm raising up men and women of prophetic utterances. There is the, now the ministry of the apostle and the prophets that are coming forward in a greater measure, but also the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers, the fivefold ministry gifts are beginning to grow in a greater way. And there's going to be, there's going to be power release like you've never seen. And there's going to be a great quickening for some. It's going to be, a, it's still going to be a year of great struggle if they don't adhere to the word of the Lord. But for those that receive and those that believe, this will be a time to flourish. Oh, I hear that. This will be a time for you to get things for pennies on the dollar. This will be a time for you to get things for pennies on the dollar. This will be a time for property. This will be a time for land. This will be a time for you to begin to, to, to move forward in that thing, the purchasing of your new home. God is saying, and I wrote this down. He gave me this when I was doing um, a confession. It says that you're about to move into the watch. It's like to have people confess. I'm moving into the house of my dreams. There's some of you that have just been, you've been dreaming about things and you've been dreaming. You've been dreaming. Dreams are cool, but until you turn it into a goal with a plan, it'll always be a dream and you need to move into it. You need to move towards it. You need to move towards that goal. It will never happen if you don't move towards it. Some of you are waiting for it to happen to you, but God says you need to make it happen. He says in these next five years, your voice will be heard and well respected in the communities around you. In these next five years, your voice will be heard and respected in the communities around you. 
He wants us now to build locally, but to think globally. And so during this time, there's a time where the word of the Lord interactions need to take place. I mean, with dignitaries, with heads of state, heads of cities, with mayors, with boards, with the school boards, with the city council, council members, senators, governors, congressmen and women. We need to have interaction where the prophetic utterance of the Lord can come forth and the prophetic voice of the church will begin to strengthen. But we got to be accurate. And part of this means we also got to be consecrated and holy. We got to now walk, walk in, a, in a light to, for this power to show up. And I remember as a young man that as I begin to sanctify myself, when I say sanctify, I begin to consecrate and God begin to deal with me about not looking at certain shows and cutting off the television and seeking his face, that that's when the power began to amplify on my life. And we can't neglect it. We can't use the grace of God to just live any kind of way. We're going to have to bring discipline. And we're going to have to do these things. So spirit of fire, I'm declaring a fast for this week coming up. The first week of the year, we're going to sanctify it unto the Lord. And it was on my heart to fast and pray that this, this week, starting this Sunday, this Sunday morning, through next Sunday, right after our service ends, we're going to be fasting collectively. We're going to be posting everything online, sending it out. The, the, so we, we're going to send that out and get that out to everybody. But we want you, and listen, see, the minute we hear fast, our flesh rise up. It's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you, you could just finish eating. All of a sudden, your stomach growling. Just because you heard the word fast, something just triggers in you. And so this is where we have to discipline our flesh. And for some, that means you can not only have to fast from food, some of you gonna have to fast from social media. Because you, you've now allowed other people's images to downplay who God, what God wants to do through you and in you. Some of you need just time with your family. You first need time with God. And so we have our, um, we're going to have our prayer schedule that we've already been doing. But we're going to send it out. Because this time we're going to be strategic in our prayer and strategic in the teaching of the word. To release the word of the Lord. And to be skilled in what we're doing as wise master builders. God says this, I've called for you to build. Jesus says, occupy, do business till I come. And it's time to focus and lock in like never before. That's the word of the Lord that he's commanded me to give for this year. Lastly, I want to declare and release a declaration of blessing over your life. But before I do that, there may be somebody that's listening that you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And you want to today. You need to. You know what? It's like, you know what? I want to I wanna start 2021 with a clean slate, with a fresh focus. And what better way than to get born again? If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to tonight, I want you to make this confession of your faith with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. Come on, everybody else repeat after. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Say, come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say this, say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. Now I also ask that you fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. Come inside me now. I receive you now to walk in me, to flow through me, to live in me. And now I have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God, amen. Hallelujah. If that's you, 
We want to know who you are. We want to know if you made that confession of your faith for the first time. Reach out to us. There's some information that should be coming up, how to connect with us. Go to our website at spiritoffire.us. Click the connect. Let us know I got born again. Also, if you're here today, you don't have a church home. Everybody needs a pastor. Everyone needs a place of connection. Let us be that for you. We want to love on you and cover you and protect you in prayer and counsel and wisdom and teaching of the word. Whatever is needed to be a supply, to be a spiritual family and fellowship for you. If that's you, if you don't have a church home and you want to connect with us and you say, I want to become a partner of this work. I want to be, I want to submit to you even as my pastors. Uh, listen, everyone is so important. It is so important. God put fivefold ministry gifts in the earth for a reason. And so now we want to make sure that even this year, that we do even a better job, that we want to do greater in providing your spiritual nourishment, nourishment and nutrition for you and teaching you the word of God and to help su su supply to you the word of God so that you can live a uh, productive and effective life. If that's you, you want to connect, please do so at this time. We'll have somebody from our ministry contact you and reach out to you. Praise God. Also, before I give you this declaration over your life, I want to give you an opportunity to sow. Yes, we are 501c3 entity and you're giving. You can write it off, you know, get it in your last giving before the end of the year so that you're going to write it off on your taxes for the new year and all of that. And take advantage of that. Hey, that's cool. But even more so, it's part of the kingdom system. We're going to be teaching more on giving and stewardship and how to function. And so you want to go in even with a plan. Tithing, when we talk about tithing, tithing is really a trust relationship with God where you are honoring him with the 10%, the first 10 off of your income, your increase. See, before Uncle Sam give you your money, they always take their taxes out, but we honor God off of the whole and say, God, I want to honor you with this 10%. I want to honor you with this tithe. Why not go into 2021 with a new mindset, putting first things first. I'm going to be dealing with in the month of January, first things first. I'm going to be talking about prayer, I'm going to be talking about giving, how to honor God in your giving, but also how to honor him in your prayer life and setting those priorities in your life. If you want to see increase, you need to structure yourself for increase, budget for increase, prepare. A budget is just a structured plan where you're showing your money where it's going. Why not factor God in that? Watch this. Giving is worship. We honor God in our giving. We worship him. Abraham in the book of Genesis brought a tenth of all because God blessed him and God gave him victory. And God, he says, you know what? Because I love you so much, God, I want to honor you with my giving. And so when you begin to do that, I know for some of you, you know, if you're not used to it, it's like, man, it's, this, this is just, just an area, Pastor, because see where your treasure is, your heart is. See, our money represents our time, our efforts, our, our, our work, our sweat. And God knows you. He says you can't serve God and mammon. Now you can serve God with mammon. Either you love one or going to love the other. Let's put God as the priority over wealth, over money. And so when God sees that he is priority, he can trust you more because it takes great character to handle plenty of wealth. Because now you will see, because there are people, as I begin to teach this, there's a scripture that talks about those that are functioning, those that are rich, it's hard for them to enter into the kingdom of God because they think that they've gotten it by their hand and their might and their ability. And now you're trying to teach them how to switch systems. And now they think as though, hey, I've been getting all this on my own to begin with. I don't need God. But we know that that's not true. He's the one that blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. He, we know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. The scripture also says, give. And it shall be given good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. Also in 2 Corinthians, he talks about God loves a cheerful giver. He says, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Listen, I was excited to release. I released my seed into the ground before I preached tonight. I, I, I was adamant about it for myself. God, I want to sow this. I want to tithe. I want to get this tithe in the ground. And I want to go ahead because I want now because the promise of a tithe is this, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing and empowerment upon you that you won't have room enough to receive it. He also promises to rebuke the devourer. Who's the devourer? Satan. 
he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. In John 10 and 10, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not only does that mean in your finances, but in all other areas. So even in the midst of a, of a pandemic, we're pandemic proof in the May household. We're pan, listen, I'm praying pandemic proof over all of our spirit of our partners and supporters and members. Listen, pandemic proof that you prosper and increase and flourish. So honor God. Some of you was like, man, it's been a struggle. Honor him with something. I need to challenge. If you've not even sown, and it's been a challenge, give. Amen. Do it as unto the Lord. Praise God. Not under compulsion of necessity, because God is looking for your heart. It's just like if I give my wife a gift, but I do it with a bad attitude, she's not going to want the gift. It's like, go ahead and take the gift back. It's the heart behind it. The thought behind it, the love behind it. So let's honor God. Going into this new year, there inf there's information that's coming up as to how you can give. So, and my prayer is that God will increase you greatly and reward you. Hundredfold return over every seed sown. Praise God. So there's the information that's coming up on your screen, different ways to give. You can just follow those prompts, whether it's through the cash app, uh, tithely, you can go online on our church website, uh, spiritofire.us and sow there and give there. The different means by which it's coming up. As you do it, do it as unto the Lord. Well, y'all, I want to say Happy New Year to you, but I want to declare some things over your life. So even as you're giving, I want to give you time to sow and to plant. But while you're planting and while you're sowing, I want you to receive this word. In this spoken declaration over you, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that this will be a year of great restoration and recompense for you and for your household, for your life. I declare that the favor of God rests heavy upon you, that God is raising up people to use their power, resources and influence to assist you and to help you. And that he's raising you up to use your power, resources and influence to assist and to help others. I declare that policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on your behalf. That you win battles you don't even have to fight because God is fighting them for you. I declare an increase of assets, especially in real estate, and an expansion of territory. I declare new jobs, greater increase. I declare right now raises and promotions to come and to take place in your life. New contracts right now in Jesus' name. That people are paying you ahead of time for the work to be done. So, Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. I declare wealth and riches in your life. I declare right now that you walk in divine health. I rebuke sickness and disease right now. In Jesus' name, come out of their bodies now. And I declare he healing, health, and wholeness from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Mentally healthy, physically healthy, financially healthy, relationally you're healthy in every area, spiritually healthy and strong. May you rise up in the victory as to who you are in Christ. May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. May great joy be your portion. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for it. And I declare and decree it is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, guys, happy new year to you all. I know right now it's about 921 locally at this time. But even if you're hearing the replay, we're going to be replaying this at 11 o'clock. So those that's watching at 11 o'clock, happy new year. The clock is already struck while I was preaching. So we'll say happy new year to everybody. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. On behalf of Pastor Rock and myself, we want to say just thank God for you. We speak the blessing of God, the wholeness of God, and the peace of God upon you. May great protection and peace be on you in Jesus' name. We love you guys. Happy New Year. Big hug, big virtual hug to you all. We love you. We love you. We love you. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.